it's all momentum and you don't want to go a day without a winnow in her situation you know because a day turns into two days to three days and suddenly all the good that you've done at the start of the year starts to fade away so it's all about momentum it's all about keeping that going and so just to to bang in one more winner tonight will make a big difference to her Marshall aids back to five to four but that's not sort of really mirroring the exchange price it's actually getting bigger on the exchanges rather than shorter so the SP at the moment isn't quite telling the truth as far as the exchange price is concerned. It keeps going up 2.52. We'll see where it goes now. Now, what do you what, what do you think of a favourite like this, Matt, who's taken an absolute age to get his head in front? I know you said the money came for him. Do you, do you think that he, because he's got that breakthrough victory, he can follow up? If we were looking at the American racing, we'd say, oh, he'll just go and win now he's got his head in front or do we question them a bit more over here and worry about his attitude look Jace I mean there are far more horsier people watching this than me but I have never ever believed that horses suddenly gain confidence by winning I've never seen any facts to back that up um, or go against it well yeah because it goes without saying that if a horse wins there are lots of reasons why it wouldn't possibly win next time you know it is it's just completely logical to say it wins two in a row just because it got confidence the first time is a nonsense there'll be handicap ratings there'll be all sorts of things maybe it went up in distance to get that first win so you know it's like the ears prick thing i know you'll be one who'll say oh it's got its ears pricked which of course you know every jockey and every trainer will tell you but I see horses finish tailed off last that have their ears pricked. For me, those kind of things are just myths without any substance behind them. But if it was just about the ratings and this one could finish one length in front of that, it'd be easy. And, you know, they, they, case, they would Marshall, all win. Well, in that case, Marshall Aid will go in for you, Shark. OK, Matt Chapman has said... I fancy Paul Amore. I think that the Mark Lock name team are in much better form now and he's had a few decent runners hopefully uh, with its ears pricked it'll gain in confidence and go and win the lucky last here we go his cat who loves a bit of lamore here we go they're well, <laughs> all in and they're set and they're off we'll just leave in the stalls there lord franklin's rider took a bit of a pull on the reins and jason hart has dropped him in last place this then the Last race of the evening over a mile and three quarters, and with hindsight, is a, an established front runner. He takes them along down the back straight with Kameen on the outside there of Enola's red cap as they turn out of the back. Paula Moore racing in fourth place with Marshall Aid's white cap on the inside next to the rail. And Lord Franklin, who's often ridden prominently, has been dropped out today. And they race on then down the side of the track, then they turn in towards the home straight for the first time with the leader last week's runner-up with hindsight in the hands of William Cox Kameen is probably just shading Enola for second little to choose between them though Marshall aid next to the rails white cap and just taking a little bit of a stronghold Paul Lamore running around a little bit once again a little bit faster Ross Ryan who's chasing a quick double here this evening just trying to settle him or her rather on the outside there and just tucked in behind them is Lord Franklin as the runners then come up past the judge with a circuit to go here in this chancellorcityracecourse.com handicap. So, with hindsight, with just under a mile to go, is the leader. Enola now racing in clear second. Marshall Aid next to the rail is third. Kameen on the outside, close fourth. Paul Amore in the green and white star is racing in fifth place. And then last of the sextet is Lord Franklin who's only about five lengths off the pace though and traveling quite comfortably at the back of the field. They're moving their way now towards the back straight. They're about to pass their point of departure, which means they've got about six furlongs left to travel here with, with hindsight, the leader. Leads by just over a length. Enola racing in second place. On the inside, Marshall Aid and Nicola Curry chasing her first win tonight following her treble here exactly a week ago this is one of the horses that made up the treble Marshall aid Kimine is on the outside of Marshall aid then Paul Amore and Lord Franklin waiting at the back of the field racing inside the final half mile now as they turn and still with hindsight the leader Enola traveling well though Martin Harley 
up on the outside now, just about to give her a reminder and does so, but uh, with hindsight is pressing on on the turn. They're about to turn into towards the final two furlongs. Marshall Aid now moves up into second place, trying to chase down the old rival from seven days ago. Marshall Aid under strong pressure to maintain the gallop. Here comes, he comes on the outside here of with hindsight. Marshall Aid now drawing alongside with hindsight. These two having a much closer battle than a week ago. There's nothing to choose between them. Under strong pressure, Marshall Aid with hindsight on the inside, just edging in front with just about 20 yards to go. And it's just with hindsight who gains his revenge on Marshall Aid. And they were a long way clear of Paul Amor in third and Lord Franklin never nearer fourth. Front running display from uh, William Cox aboard the 10 year old for Steve Gollings. Well done to with hindsight who knocked loudly on the door on a few occasions and would not lie down here. Did he want it more than the second man? Well, obviously Marshall not, Lack. Jason, because the second's just gained all that confidence you were telling us about. You were, uh, it's funny, it's remarkable how. You can be right on one occasion and you'll jump all over the confidence factor, yet with the one to two poke earlier in the evening, you went very, very you, quiet you afterwards. Are so horrible to bring that up. Like, literally, you, this is meant to be a team effort. We you've just gone down, the, you've gone down the aggressive route oh, straight off oh, the bat. Look, obviously Marshall Aid really Steve Gollings, good. Uh, now, we were talking about um, dual purpose trainers. Doesn't matter if it's five furlongs or four miles, does it? Steve can train them. Yeah, um, look, I've been a fan of the Gollings stables for years and years and years. And used to speak to Steve quite a lot back in the day in the terms of Raw Shakespeare was a really good horse that he got off um, Sheikh Mohammed I think Raw Shakespeare and, and turned him into an absolutely class hurdler uh, what did he win he won the Agfa hurdle back in the day uh, the elite hurdle a really good horse and let's not forget Steve Collins actually had definitely read before he went to Brian Ellison. Um, you know, he's, he's a really good trainer, Steve Gollings. Um, he doesn't have really good horses um, for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know why those good horses have faded away a little bit, but he is. He can definitely get the job done here. And well done to William Cox here, who's battled away despite the fact that Marshall Aid came into this race with the confidence sky high. Yeah, he certainly will. I like the way that in the closing stages, he puts his whip down. You've got the young Nicola Curry, who's been flying along, getting all of the publicity, if you like. Be in a mood, though, and then though, just turns his whip over, Is puts this it the down. between having the rail, Jason, and not having it? Do you think Marshall Aid would have won if it had been on the rail? We've seen two horses tonight who have, um, well, no, two horses who did managed to win on the rail but also won the one to two shot who backed out of it a little bit down on the fence as well so you couldn't really say there was a golden highway if you like or a particularly better part of better part of the track someone's just turned the computer off um just <laughs> obviously someone's getting a quick exit <laughs> oh i'm out the office on the way home oh dear it's just come over the loudspeaker system um at lingfield we often see horses charging down the middle of the track but in general terms, Jace, do, do jockeys love to have the rail? Does it really help you as a rider? And if so, why? Yeah, well, you're not having to pull them around. The horse will run up against the rail. And if you've got your whip in the opposite hand to that rail, then it can obviously be a massive help, especially with the younger horses, Matt. With two-year-olds, it is a huge advantage, you know, unless you're on by, you know, by far and away much, much the best. Get in the rail, be in the shortest way round. It, it's not rocket science, that particular part of riding. Sometimes it's often forgotten and jockeys will think that they...